All right, so here's some extra practice problems for the exam that's tomorrow, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. So you have a few, you have an extra day for that. Um, so let's go ahead and dive in. So I put it in order by chapter, so we're able to complete this study guide. So starting with question number one, which is going to be one, two, and three, which is going to be something that's going to be similar to the previous exam, right? I'm going to be asking you um, what this account is, and your job to, to me is to determine what the type is, what the um, category it belongs to, and whether it has a debit or credit balance, okay? Now, of course, like, it's going to look exactly like the, previous, the first exam, right? I'm going to give you an individual question, and you are to answer um, with the series, right? It might be if, if, for example, the first one's checking, right? I can say checking could be income, um, can, income, other, and it is a debit. Okay, so that's an example right there. All right, so let's go ahead and go ahead and answer these questions. So, for checking, what is what type of an account is checking, and what category does it belong to, and what normal balance does it have? Is an asset. It is an asset. Good. It's a current. It is definitely debit. good. It's definitely current, and yes, it is debit. Good. What about an account's payable? Liability. Yes, it's a liability. Now, what kind of liability? Other. Uh, so I don't remember. Other uh, I no. Oh, operating, no. I forgot. That's I forgot. I don't remember. Okay, so again, take... I have to check. No worries. So again, what I have you guys also do for... Um... Oh, it's uh, current, sorry. Good, it's current. Yeah. So in this case, I would recommend you to utilize the review sheets too because I do provide it for there too. Yeah. Okay, so good, it's current. And what kind of normal balance would it have? It is a credit. It would definitely have a credit, good. Mm -hmm. What about supplies expense? I'm sorry, well, I skipped one. Inventory. Inventory is an uh, asset. Good. Current. Good. And uh, debit. Yes, right? All assets would normally have a debit balance, right? Yeah. What about supplies expense? Supplies expense is a fixed asset. It's an asset. Oh. No, there's a supplies oh, expense. Is an expense. Oh, by the way, it's expense. Good. It's an expense, yeah. Yes. Now, what kind of expense? It is, it is uh, 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 operating expense, no? Yep, good. Operating yeah. expense. Good. And what kind of balance would it normally have? Debit. Yes. Expenses are debit. Yes, expenses are debits, yes. What about accumulated depreciation? I know that is a credit. Good, it is a credit for sure. No, I, it is an, it is an, it is, it is, it is, what is an expense, right? In this case, this is accumulated depreciation, not depreciation expense. It is an asset. No, it's, uh, it is an asset. It, it is a credit. Yes, because this is a contra asset account. It's a contra. It's a contra. What do you normally use depreciation for? Expense. No. What do you normally depreciate? Oh. What kind of assets do you depreciate? A fix. A fix Fixed. Asset. Good. Mm -hmm. Right. What about bad debt expense? It is a uh, 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 expense. Mm -hmm. And it is. Uh, is it uh, 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 operating expense? Correct. Operating expense, yes. 
So what kind of balance would this normally have? It is a dead scale. Yes, yes. Um, more than likely, most expenses are, in fact, debited. Okay? And I have inventory in here twice, so excuse me for that one. All right, so we, we could skip that one. So in this case, what about unearned revenue? Residual income, no? And no. No, it's revenue, so it's, uh, that's the reason I asked. Uh, right, but in this case, it's unearned. You haven't earned it yet. So it's an asset? It is like, uh, not an asset, because in this case, uh, so an unearned revenue, right, is when a customer pays you money in advance for services. Okay, so I don't... So if a customer gives you money... It's a liability. It becomes a liability. Good. Mm -hmm. And it's a current liability. It's a current liability, yes. So therefore... And it is a credit? Yes, it has a credit balance. Okay. What about accounts receivable? Asset. Is it an asset? What kind of asset? It's a fixed asset. No, actually, it's a current asset. Yes, it's a current asset. What kind? Okay, good. And what kind of normal it's balance? Asset, yeah. It's there. It's debit. Good. Now, what about furniture? Furniture is a fixed asset. Good, it's a fixed asset. And what kind of normal balance would a fixed asset have? Debit. It would have a debit, good. No? Yes, that's right. <laughs> See, I make a mistake, right? <laughs> no, 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 that's good. All right, what about an owner's withdrawal? Is equity? Yes. Good, it is equity. And it's debit. Debit. No. Yes. Owner's withdrawal? Yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. Because it's yes, a contra. Yes. Good, it's a contra account. So in this case, right, if it's a contra account, what kind of category would it fall under? Is equity, but it doesn't have a category, no? Good. Equity has no categories. Excellent. Okay. What about sales? Income? Revenue. Yes. Sales is always going to be income. Yes. Okay. What kind of income? Operating. Operating. Good. Okay. Or in this case, it's just regular sales. Um, and what kind of balance would it have? It's credit. It would have a credit balance. Okay. All right. What about depreciation expense? It's an expense. It's an expense. No, oh, yeah, oh, but you, you missed the... Uh, oh, yes. Of cost of goods sold. What's the cost of goods okay. sold? This is an expense, too. Yes, it is. So we have both expenses, okay? What about cost of goods sold? What kind of category would cost of goods sold fall under? The cost of, the it, cost of uh, goods sold. Good. It has its own separate category. And what kind of normal balance would it be? Debit. It would have a debit balance. Okay. okay. Um, and then, of course, we have depreciation expense. It is uh, expense. And it is... Uh, Operating? Mm-hmm. Expense? Correct. All right. And what kind of normal balance would this have? Oh, de is debit. It would have a debit balance. Good. Excellent. Okay. Last but not least, we have the allowance for doubt full accounts. I'm not so sure anything is a liability. Is can be possible? No, because this is when customers owe you money but they can't pay for it. It's an asset? It is an asset, yes it is. So, a current asset? It is a current asset. 
Now, but the balance of this account is credit most of the time, no? Yes, because it's a contra asset account, right? It's a contra account to accounts receivable, right? It's the opposite mm -hmm. wit flow of yeah. accounts receivable. That's the reason I wasn't sure <laughs> that I told you liability. I don't. I wasn't sure that it's an asset. Is most of the time they are debit. So okay, because this is what people owe you. What you don't owe anybody anything. Mm -hmm. This is what people owe you, so it's a contra asset account. Good, all right. Uh, so questions, uh, so uh, we're going to move on to chapter four now. So question four asks, okay, under the rules of GAAP, which rule states that when you establish a uh, business, you need to keep your personal and your business transactions separate? No worries. Give me one sec. No worries. Sorry, I'm back. No worries. Oh, good. And the children that are at home and then they're going crazy. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. So number four is the organization for personal purchase for personal business transactions. So this is a business economy is a C, no? Yes, it is. Good job. Okay. Okay. Oop, I just highlighted both. My bad. Okay, so um then question number five says, okay, so if I purchase a machine for $500. In my books, I must record it at $500, um, even if I plan to sell it for $700. Which gap rule states this? Then I'm not so sure if it's o, o A or D. I'm not so sure. Okay. So in this case, remember, I told you I'm not going to teach you anything in regards to concerns or constraints. And what would you say the other option was? D, revenue account. Um, oh, is cost, uh, cost benefits, A? No, 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 it's no. not, no. It's not, no, this and not the other one. Yeah, yeah, I have to review this chapter because it's not the... Okay, so in this case, right, my question is asking, like, right now, what rule says that I have to record my purchasing of any kind of assets at its fair market value. So right now, if I made a purchase of a machine for $500, I must record it in my books as $500, even if I, per oh. even if I want to sell it for $700. It's still in my books, it's $500. It's C. C. Historical cost. Historical cost is correct. Right? Because in this case, I didn't sell it just yet. That would be revenue recognition. Okay. All right, number six. Okay, um, customer A decides to purchase an item for uh, for fifteen dollars and sixty five cents from your store on an account. A few days later, you receive a check for fifteen sixty five. You must properly record the sale and a uh, payment. Okay, so which of the which gap rule governs this? Matching principle. Matching principle is correct, right? You have a sale for match it for fifteen sixty five, and they received a check for the same amount. This is matching principle. Good. So that's exactly what I want you to learn here in um, the rules of gap. Is this time I want you to apply the concepts. I'm not going to give you definitions this time around. I want you to use those definitions to apply it to a scenario. Okay. Number seven says cash basis is when? It is A. A. Revenues are recognized when cash is received. All right. Versus expenses are rec recognized when it has incurred. Okay. So good. So, A is the only answer. Good. Okay. 
Number eight, which of the following is not a step in the accounting cycle? D. D, making decisions based on your financial um, statements. Good, right? You don't do that. <laughs> yes, yeah, not a part of the step, okay? So now we're going to move on to chapter five, okay? What are the tracking methods used for inventory? A. A, periodic and perpetual, good. Okay. Uh, number 10 says that, uh, what are the costing methods used in um, inventory? Yes, uh, D. Good, yes. all of the above, right? We learned both periodic and perpetual, and each periodic is LIFO, FIFO, weighted average, while perpetual is LIFO, FIFO, moving average. And of course, specific ID, we never talked about it, but it does exist. Mm -hmm. okay. Number 11, okay. What, uh, when delivery charges are made on COD, what does that mean? C, cash on delivery. C, cash on delivery is correct. Is that easy? <laughs> <laughs> yes. Uh, number 12, okay. Um, what is the definition of periodic and perpetual? It's uh, a. a periodic means once in a while and perpetual means um, constantly. That is correct. Okay. Now, these are easy because this is just reviewing the questions, but the harder parts are when you actually have to start calculating. Yes, I know. All right, number so Yeah. And then we have in the study guide, there are calculations in here. So I, able, I was able to be able to do that for you, okay? Number 13 says that true or false at the end of um, a, the, at the end of a periodic inventory, right? Um, a, um, yep. a conversion entry is, ne is needed. Mm -hmm. It's true. Do you need a conversion entry? Yes. Uh, if, mm -hmm. if at the end of the period, under periodic uh, tracking method, yes. Tracking. Yes, mm -hmm. so good. It is true. Right? So here is where we're going to do an example of uh, configuring um, a periodic inventory because, once again, we're going to be learning both periodic and perpetual on the exam. So here, here is a scenario. So the question here is that your tracking um, method and costing method is periodic LIFO. So in this case, right, let's go over the scenario, okay? So your tracking method is periodic, okay? So on June 1st, you made a purchase of 100 toys at a dollar each. Um, freight cost $25. Hundred and one twenty five, zero twenty five, one twenty five, and it is uh, uh, it is one point twenty five. Good. No, that's good. That's right. That's correct. All right. So then on June tenth, you end up purchasing two hundred toys for a dollar twenty five, with the freight costing fifty. Hundred times one point twenty five is two hundred and fifty. And that's fifty. And one seventy two seventy five. One at uh, two fifty plus fifty? Yes, two fifty one is uh three hundred, sorry. Got three hundred. So one point five. We have a uh, one then on June twelfth, you sold two hundred toys for five dollars each. No sales tax. Uh, no, we don't do anything with that anyhow. Good, right? Because we're under periodic inventory, so therefore we ignore it. So then the next one says June fifteen, you purchased three hundred toys at a dollar fifty, with a freight costing seventy five. Five. It is four hundred and fifty. 
plus 75. 525. 525. Okay. 525 divided by how many? 300. Be 175. 175. Good. All right. Again, then on the 20th, you sold an additional 250. And last but not least, on June 30th, you had a total of 150 toys left on hand. So there we have it. Okay. So again, we need to go ahead and sum up our totals. So how many um, in quantity did I purchase? 600. 600. At what total purchase price? So we have uh, 150 plus 60, 800. 800. 800. How much was my freight? 150. 150. Bring in my total, total cost to be? 950. 950. Okay. So in this case, we're using LIFO as my method, right? Mm -hmm. yep. So if LIFO is my method, right, and I have 150 items left, how many items did I sell? So 450. 450, so let's go ahead and use the LIFO method. So in this case, LIFO, which batch? One, mm -hmm. uh, uh, 100 and Oh, it's LIFO, sorry. It's uh, the last one, uh, the 450, sorry. 550, oh, 450 dollars. Okay. So in this case, um, we're looking at four, uh, we're looking at... Actually, we sell everything. Yeah, we're going to sell everything. Oh, there are 300. I'm sorry, I was thinking that there's 300. Yeah. No worries. I'm sorry, I was doing that. I thought the 450 is the amount of the... So it's $525. What we have there now. Uh, in this case, um, what's my cost per item for my last batch? In the time on. Seven five, five hundred and twenty five. No, yep, five hundred and twenty five. Okay, all right. So, then how much more do I need to purchase to get to four hundred and fifty or sell? One hundred and fifty. You need to sell one hundred and fifty times a dollar. Dollar fifty times one point five is two hundred and twenty five. Okay, so in this case, we have a total of 450 units. 750. Okay, so 750 is this right here. So then what is my um, ending balance? 950. 900. Minus 750. So we have a 200. Good, 200. So the question asks here, what was the total cost of goods sold at the end of your inventory? B. B, good. B. Mm -hmm. Okay, and then question 15 asks, what is the total cost of your cost of goods sold? Seven hundred and fifty. I don't remember. Okay. Yep. Seven. C. No. Seven hundred fifty. Seven hundred and fifty. Good. Okay. Oh. Good. Seven hundred fifty. Okay. Mm -hmm. So here once again. Um, since it is the same exact scenario, what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to copy and paste it over because it's the same exact thing. But this... But the... Yes. Out. Yes. It, but the difference here is it's not LIFO. What is it? It's FIFO. It's FIFO. So if I have all of this right Question. here... Mm -hmm, and let's say you said 450 was our end goal. So in this case, right, 
How am I going to calculate my total cost of goods sold? So you start from the beginning, mm -hmm. $100, you got 100 units first, mm -hmm. and one ten, it's 125 Okay. And, uh, and then you have a little, your 200 units here, one, it's $300. So you get rid of 200 at 150 to be a total of $300, okay? So how many more do I need to sell? $150 at $2.75. So how much is this? $150 times 1.75 is 262.5. Okay, so that gives me a total of once again four fifty. And this is gonna give me a total here of how much? It is six hundred eighty seven point five. So six eighty five point six eight six eight seven point five. So therefore what is going to be my ending inventory? 262.5. Good. So. Yeah, it's exactly the half of the. Exactly. We already solved. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> exactly the half. So it's number C. So Next good. Question. Mm -hmm. What is the total cost of goods sold? C. C. Here we have the same exact set of information, except the difference here is this is weighted average. So once again, I'm going to copy and paste this here. Okay. Mm -hmm. so, so this time, yes, we need the cost of item, the average cost per item. So what is my average cost per item? I don't remember how we're doing that. Okay, this Do is... Have to do 125 plus 150 divided by 2. No, I don't. Oh, you I don't could remember. do it. You could do it that way, but what was what was this? What what how do you solve for the average cost per item? You need the total total cost. The total, yes. And the uh, divide by unit, by the unit, no? Mm -hmm. By the total units. Unit. So you have uh, 950 divided by 600. 900, guess, good. 950 divided by 600, what do you get? Divided by 600, it is the 1.58333333. Good. 1.58, no? Or 50, 0.3. 1.5833? Mm-hmm. Okay. All right, so then, of course, we know that we should have 450 la uh, sold. Okay. So in this case, 712.5. You said this? Point, yep. Okay. I know it's 950. It's going to be 237.5. What was it? 200? 237.5. Okay, so let's take a look here. What is your total ending inventory? 200A, number A. You go a little A. Okay, good. And what is the uh, the total ending of your cost of goods sold? 712 is D. Good. Yeah, because you write 750 so. <laughs> 750? Yeah, yeah. Uh, no, 712 is right. 712. Yes. And you have the answer, 712. Yes, we asked right there, 712.50. Mm -hmm. 4D. Yeah, no, it's on the cost of goods uh, sold on the uh, on the bottom. You have, uh, you put it uh, 715. 
Oh, yes. Yes, 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 sorry. Thank you. Okay. All right. Now, we need to do a conversion entry. So, in this case, we're going to... Mm -hmm. How do you do a conversion entry here? So, the inventory... Yes, ending inventory, good. Purchase expense? Uh, not here, but yes, there's a purchase expense. Cost of good cost, or good sold. Yeah, uh, after inventory is cost of good sold. Mm -hmm. And uh, ending inventory, no? No, we don't have beginning inventory. Okay. So we're supposed to pay, no? So something like that? Not for this one. I forgot what <laughs> we're doing there. <laughs> I forgot. I don't know what we are saying. No, this is for sale. I don't remember what we put it there. What we're doing uh, later. Okay, that's fine. Well, we let's just go ahead and solve for this. So, what was my ending inventory? The ending. I, uh, I don't know. Can we go up uh, one second? So it's 237. 0.5. And then cost of good sold. We have a 712.5. Okay. What was my total purchase expense? Purchase. Uh, see. Oh, I forget the freight. Oh. There you go. There you go. Good. Freight expense. You know freight expense. <laughs> okay. So we have eight hundred and one hundred and fifty. Good. Plus one hundred and fifty. Good. All right. So in this case, remember. When you journalize this, I could ask you, A, is cost of goods sold? B, could be uh, freight expense. C, could be purchase expense. Make sure you don't just choose one or the other. You make sure you maximize all, all the answers that are possible for this one. Okay. Yes. Yeah, you know, with the um, preparatory, I forget about the periodic notes. I just have to review. I didn't have the time to review the... The last, uh, this one, the first method. No, that's okay. Yeah, don't worry. Okay? That's what this review is for, is so that um, you can remember that this is what we have to do. Okay? Everything. Yep, everything. Mm -hmm. So then question number 21 asks that on June 17, um, you received 10 broken mugs, okay, and you request a full refund um, from the vendor, okay? What accounts will be journalized for the return if you are using per periodic inventory? We return, we return the... It's A and A, no? A. Two account or one? Uh, let's take a look. So, so let's see. A says debit the purchase returns and allowances, okay? In this case, right... When you're dealing with mm -hmm. purchase, uh, uh, when you're dealing with purchases, right, for periodic inventory, are you debiting or are you crediting the purchase expense when you buy it? It's debit. You debit, right? So in this case, I'm making a refund. I'm returning. Mm -hmm. So would you debit? 
the you would credit the purchase returns and allowances. Yes. Credit. Mm-hmm. So it's a B. Yes. Mm-hmm. All right, number 22. If terms are 5%, 15, net 30, what does that mean? Five percent discount if you pay in fifteen days and not if pay full uh, is A. A, you take the five percent discount. You take five percent discount if you pay on fifteen days. Good. If you pay on fifteen days, you know you can pay on nine. Correct. Okay. Last question in chapter five. Okay, what does net mean? Immediately, B. Yep. Oh, yep, B. You take the discount now. Mm -hmm. Immediately. Okay. All right, now we're moving on to question to chapter six, where it was the sales process. So here, chapter 20, I'm sorry, question 24 says, um, a customer buys 10 shirts for $5 each. Sales tax is 8.25%. Total cash sales was for a total of $54.12. The next day, the customer wants to return five shirts because they were the wrong size, okay? So um, the customer demands a full refund uh, for the five shirts. What should you do and journalize um, what should just the journalized entry look like, okay? Assume that you are using periodic inventory. So you sell, um, is it, where is the sell discount of it? Oh, no. You buy it, so you can buy it. Okay, so let me see. So return um, is C, no? C. C, good, right? We have to remember we're going to be refunding the customer, right? For the full amount of the five t shirts wow. plus we're going to give back the tax. And we're going to give back the cash that they said gave us. Good. Good, right? Question number 25 says, when um, there is a short, I'm sorry, a store-wide sale discount for 40% off, you can only take a discount on which items? Under A. A, merchandising a selling price. price. Yes, right? You can't take a discount off of sales tax. You can't take a discount on shipping and handling, and of course, none of the above is not the correct answer. Okay. All right. So here we have here a uh, a lower cost of market. If I purchased something originally for four dollars and seventy five cents each, and um, the replacement cost is going to be four dollars and five cents, uh, I sell the product for ten dollars and fifty cents. And here, the cost of disposal is going to cost me $1.33. And the amount of profit I want to gain is $3.55. So, how do I solve? Good. Ten fifty minus for the selling price minus the disposal price of $1.33. It is $9.17. for the ceiling. All right, how do I solve for the floor? Uh, for the floor is the the ceiling minus the amount profit. Mm -hmm. So it is uh, what is the amount profit? Okay. Oh, the profit three five five minus three point five 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 sixty two. Five sixty two. Okay. So now we need to determine what is going to be the market value by comparing three numbers. What are they? The ceiling price, uh -huh. the floor pr price, uh -huh. and the replacement pr uh, okay. price. Okay, good. So which one's in the middle? 
We have a legacy 45, 4.05 pressure replacement, the whole thing is 5.62 and the other one it is 2.3, so it is 5.62 is the floor, floor price. It, okay, good with the market, okay. So the last question okay. asked tells me which one is lower, the original cost of $4.75 or the market price of $5.62? Is the original cost five seventy five? Four seventy five. Good. Mm -hmm. Good. <laughs> okay. Now we're finally moving on to chapter seven. Okay. So chapter seven says, remember, this is pure. This is perpetual inventory now. So perpetual inventory, sales and purchases. Okay. So number twenty seven asks. Um, your uh, tracking method is perpetual, okay? On June 1st, you made a purchase of 100, to a co 100 coffee mugs for $2.35 each, okay? Um, and the freight will cost you $100, okay? You purchase this on an account. Record this transaction, so you have a 100 times 2.35. It is $335 on uh, every, what did you buy? The mugs, uh, coffee mugs. Mm -hmm. So coffee mugs? Mm -hmm. So you have a 300, 335. Good, right, because you include everything, right? 100 times 235 gives you 235, mm -hmm. and you have Account to include. Payable. Good, accounts payable. Mm -hmm. Good. Okay. Yep, good. All right, number 28 says, okay, on June 7th, okay, you um, received your coffee mugs and found that two of them are broken, okay? Mm -hmm. So if that's, if, if, the, if or sorry, two of them are cracked, okay? And again, you requested a full refund for your vendor. Record this transaction. So this is assuming this is a continuation. So you do... You reduce from account in the payable and you and you add to the inventory, no? Are you adding to inventory? No, you uh, you um okay. It's okay. actually you have to uh, reduce the amount from account payable, so you have. How do you reduce a liability? Account payable, and you can put an uh, inventory mark, no? Yes. So that means that uh, you put it back at your uh, inventory because it's returning, no? Yes. You're taking it out from inventory. Yes. So in this case, accounts payable and uh, coffee mugs was my account. How much was each cup? Oh, it was two. Two. Uh, for one, uh, two, uh, two cups for one twenty-five. Makes sense. Nope, 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 nope. This is the, the they're uh, connected. So how much did you originally? Two thirty-five. That includes 235. the freight. Two thirty-five. Good. Two thirty-five. So it is four point seven. Good. All right. Then question number 29 says that on June 8th, okay, you sold 25 coffee mugs for $10 each. If it cost you $3.37 each, okay, assume no sales tax. All sales were made with cash. Yes. Mm -hmm. This is chapter 7, so this is perpetual cash. inventory. Uh-huh. Cash. Twenty-five mugs for ten dollars, so it's two hundred and fifty cash. 
do Tony Pai é, teatro, eu arranjo aqui. And um, that's their coffee. Tem light, no? What, what account is this? Is it, uh, let me see. You, uh, yeah, coffee mugs, no? No, because in this case, right, what, no. what, what did I do? Why am I receiving cash? You sell the... Yes, you sold. You sell the... the yeah. Oh, oh. I got it. I have to focus. Yes. Mm -hmm. You sold you sold something, so that's why you're receiving you cash. It. Now, mm -hmm. this is where that's right, salt. Mm -hmm. I know salt, salt. Okay, I got it. However, you are correct because this is perpetual inventory, right? We also need to update mm -hmm. our inventory. And how do we update our inventory? How do we take it out from inventory? Cost of good sold. Cost of good sold. Mm -hmm. And then uh, the coffee mat. For the difference, huh? Okay. Now, okay, what do you mean by difference? So the 337 times. No? Mm -hmm. 337 times. And 10. 10, uh, 25, no? Mm hmm. 137 times 25. So it is 84.25. 84.25. All right, because that's what it costs you to sell them, right? This is your selling price. Make sure you remember the difference. And there you mm -hmm. go. Awesome. Okay, then question 30 asks, then on June 10, a customer returns two of the coffee mugs at a full refund, and you sold um each mug for ten dollars each and of course it cost you three dollars and thirty seven cents each record this transaction so cash no actually uh, you return so sales return uh an all allowance mm -hmm. we don't have a tax so cash no. Mm hmm So we sell, it was two, no? Mm hmm Two for ten dollars or twenty dollars, no? Mm hmm And then uh a return a you know oh um how you call that? Uh coffee mat and cost of good salt. For the return it is 375. I don't remember. It's 337. Um, oh, 337. It is 33.7. No, it, this was how many? Uh, two. Uh, so it's 6 something. 2, 1, 3, 7, 10, 2, no? 674. Is it 2 coffee mugs? Okay. 337. No, 33.7. 33.7? 3. $10 3. each. That's what you sold it for. That was just, oh, I'm sorry, I, I messed it up. It's just two uh, marks for 3.7 each, the 3.37 each. That's so how much it costs you. Okay, so it's 674, yeah. Good. <laughs> no worries. Okay. So remember, the cost it cost you is different from your selling price that you sell selling to your customers. Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. Good. Question 30. Uh, okay, now we're in Chapter 8. So now we're dealing with perpetual inventory. Perpetual. Okay, so this is where we have to focus. All right. Here, your tracking method and costing method is perpetual LIFO. Okay, so in this case, right, let's take a look at the scenario one at a time. On June 1st, you purchase 100 toys at a dollar each with the freight costing you 25. So 100. 
125. So what's my cost per item? 125. $1.25. So then, and then on June 10, you end up purchasing another 200 items at $1.25 with a freight costing you 50. Two hundred and fifty plus fifty, three hundred. Bringing your cost per item to be? It's uh, three hundred divided by two hundred. Uh huh. Right. One point five. A dollar fifty. So now here it says that on June 12th, you sold 200 toys at $5 each. Mm -hmm. No sales tax. No sales tax. Okay. So... So you have a $200, so uh, because 200 units, the first that you take it is the 100, no? What method are we using? Oh, let me see. Cost. Oh, right, so the last one. Mm -hmm. So the 200. Uh huh. So $1.50. Uh huh. Plus 300. You take all of them. Mm hmm. So we're going to subtract 200. 200. Okay. So in this case, if you have, if you want to, you can just take this and scratch them out, right? Strike through them. Because you no longer have that amount anymore. You only have 100 left. Okay. So then next thing we have here is that on the 15th of June, we end up purchasing 300 units at $1.50. So we have a 550 plus 300 plus 750, which is? 450. 450 plus 75. So 525. Which brings your cost per item to be? 1.75. $1.75. Okay. So then let's see what happened next. Then on June 20th, you sold 250 mm -hmm. units. Mm hmm. So let's go ahead and do that. 250 times 175, 237.5. So what should you be remaining here? 87.5. Okay, well you said 87.5. Mm -hmm. Okay, so therefore, um, let's go ahead and calculate our total. So right here will be your total. Of, um, so of here? Of the product that you have? Whatever you want to do first. So the so in this case, how many items did I sell? Four hundred and fifty. Mm -hmm. For a total cost of seven hundred thirty-seven point five. Okay, and how much do you have remaining in inventory? One hundred and fifty. One hundred and fifty at a total cost of. Okay, one. Let me see. One twenty-five plus eighty-seven point five. It is 212.5. Good. So let's go ahead and solve the question here. So what is the total cost of your ending inventory? B. B. Okay. And then, then this question says, what is your total cost of your end, your cost of goods sold? Amount is the can I, oh seven hundred and thirty seven fifty mm -hmm. is the total amount of the total amount uh, 
of your cost of goods sold. Cost of sold. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's it. Yep. All right. So good job there. And then here, um, it's the same process with FIFO, so you're able to do that. But this time, let's go ahead and do the same scenario, except this is average. with moving average. Okay. So we're going to do the same thing because moving average is different, right? We have to add our numbers up together to get our totals. So in this case, same scenario. Two first. Go ahead. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but we have a 150 on hand. 150 toys. Mm. It's the same. Sorry. Yes, it's the same. Yeah, it's a, uh, in this case, yes, it's the same. But this time, it's different because this time we're using moving average. It's going to be, we're going to calculate it a lot differently. Right? Mm -hmm. So in this case right here, on June 1st, we have a total of 100 uh, units that we purchased at a dollar each. 125, is it, yeah, 125. 125, 1.5, 1.25. Good, no worries. <laughs> okay, so here on June 10, we end up purchasing an additional 200 units at a dollar 25. Right, over 200, 250, and 300. It was $1.50. Okay. Now, in this case, right, we are using moving average. What do I have to do here that's different? To totalize the so 300. Uh, so it's 435 divided by 300, 425 divided by 300. So it's 1.416666. Good. So then, next question says here that on June 12th, you sold 200 toys at $5 each. So in this case, um, I'm going to, it's June 12th, 200. 200. What's my average cost per item? 1.4166. Okay, so what's, okay, so that gives me? Is two hundred and eighty three point three 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 two three two. Okay. So that we um uh, subtract from three hundred two hundred. So we have one hundred. Where is the two hundred? Uh, 25 minus 283 point three three 141 and 67 cents 141 and 60 67 cents okay divided by 100 it is the price it is 140 sorry 140 167 it's a little bit more okay all right good so then this case, right, let's see what happened next. Then on June 15, we end up purchasing an additional 300 units at $1.50. So June 15, 300 mm -hmm. at $1.50. 450. Plus 75. 5, 25. Good. But what do we have to do differently here? Now we have to add the same, no? Mm -hmm. 400 plus one, uh, 525 plus 1.47 plus 1.41 plus it is 
Divide How do you get 68 if it's 67? <laughs> All right, but it should be, yes, it should be 68, or, yeah, 666.67. Because it's 1.666. 6, 6, 6, it is 1.666675. How many sixes? Uh, four. Good. So then on June 20th, all right, June 20th, we sold 250 more units. Okay, so June 20th, 250 units at 1.66667. 75. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so we have a 416.668. Seven five. So four hundred sixteen sixty seven six actually sixty eight six six eight six hundred and six six hundred sixty eight seventy five. Too many numbers. Okay, so how so you have to round that up to that six oh, to a seven. seven. All right, yeah. good. And then we're gonna subtract that out. Two hundred fifty, okay. so you should have hundred and fifty left. You're going to minus, minus 41667. Seven minus, what is that? 416. So we have 250. So 200 divided by 150 is 1.66666. Okay. So 166. That's fine. Okay, so here. Let's total up our uh, total here. So we have 450 units. At what total cost? Um, let's see, 416, 167 plus 23, 700. All right. All right, so let's go ahead and answer the questions. What was the total ending of your inventory? 250. 250. Okay. What is the total cost of your goods sold? 700. 700. Good. All right. So those are the questions I can ask you for Chapter 8. So once again, yes, it's all, you know, if you know how to do it, then you can answer it quickly. But if you don't, then that's where you will struggle. <laughs> Okay. No, it's not so complicated. You have to, to back the to back to the business like here. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So good. You did a good job here. All right. So <laughs> all right. So we have a couple more chapters left, right? We have chapter nine. So this is going to be an example in your exam where you have a list of expenses, right? You have the equation here. The scenario says use the following information to answer the next question. So here on January 1st, okay, you established a petty cash fund for $500, okay? Then on January 30th, you counted a total receipts to be, you had a birthday cake for $19.99, you had a pizza for $23.78, you bought office supplies for $602, and lastly, you bought postage stamps for $10.75. So the question here for 35 says, for what amount do you need to write a check for to replenish your petty cash fund? For uh, B, $60 something. $60.54. $60. That's right. You're gonna add uh you're gonna add your 19 to the 23 to the 6 to the 10. And you should get, I think that's correct, 6054. Okay. 60 something. I didn't calculate the most closer of the amount of the, the receipt. Okay, good. All right. Question number 36 is how do you establish a petty cash fund? Debit, debit cash, and credit uh, checking. Hey. Good, good. All 
Okay. Number 37. Okay, how do you replenish a petty cash fund? The total amount of the total receipt B, no? Yep, that's correct. Mm -hmm. You're going to write a check in the amount of the total receipts in your petty cash drawer. All right, so that's chapter nine. So here we are on chapter 10. Okay, so this is all about receivables, bad debt, um, reconciliations, and so on and so forth. So question number 38 says, under which method does the IRS use the right uh, to, to write off bad debt for tax purposes? It's C. C, the direct write-off method. Yes, that's correct. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. Here it says here, number 39, okay, a company estimates that um, 34887 of its 500,000 accounts receivable is to be uncollectible, okay? And there's currently a debit balance of $5,000 in the allowance or doubtful accounts. The adjustment entry will be? It is... Um... See, account receivable plus is five thousand thirty nine eight hundred and eighty seven. That is correct, right? Because here we're using the balance sheet method. We recognize the account receivable means that we actually care about whatever balance there is in the allowance for double accounts. In this case, we know that it's a debit balance, so that indicates that we must add five thousand to the estimated amount of thirty four. So good, all right. If a company is going, it estimates that 34887 of the 500,000 total credit sales is to be uncollectible. And there's currently a credit balance in the allowance or doubtful accounts for $5,000. What will the adjustment entry be? A. A, right? In this case, we don't care about what balance there is because we see the word total credit sales which indicates that it is the income statement, which therefore we only need to take the estimated amount of the 34887, okay? If a customer, if a, sorry, if a company estimates that 34887 of its total accounts receivables to be uncollectible, and there's currently a credit balance of $5,000 in the allowance for doubtful accounts, the adjustment entry will be C, right? 29887 because in this case, account receivable subtract. and credit means to subtract. Good. So in this case, good. All right. Last but not least, if a company um, estimates that 34887 total, uh, to of a 500,000 total credit sales is to be uncollectible and there's currently a debit balance of $5,000 in the allowance for doubtful accounts, the adjustment entry will be A. Yes. Okay. Once again, the total credit sales tells you to stop, and that's all you need to focus on is the estimated amount. Good. Mm -hmm. So here's an example right here of a bank statement. Okay. Mm -hmm. You have your um, cash ledger here, and you have your check register as well as your deposit slips. Okay. So in this case, mm -hmm. right? Um, we're going to be doing a bank reconciliation. So I'm going to kind of, I'm going to go ahead and um, make this a little smaller. It's a little too big. Okay, so let's go ahead and solve for one of the sides. So which one are you going to do, bank or cash? Let's go to the cash like. Okay, cash. Class. All right, so cash okay. side first. Okay, so cash side first. Mm -hmm. What's the ending balance in my cash ledger account? Uh, it is uh, one thousand one hundred fifty-three. So eleven fifty-three. Thirty-first, eleven. Good, eleven fifty-three. 
All right, so in this case, on the cash side, what are we going to be adding to our cash? The interest. Interest. Okay, so let's take a look at our bank statement. Okay, so here we go. How many? So we have interest. Go ahead. Yes, you have a ACH is mm -hmm. 125 and interest 75. Okay. So we have $200 there. Mm -hmm. Good. So I'm going to go ahead and write and indicate here. We have ACH for 175. And then we have interest for. Is it? Hold on. I think it's. I think it's was. It's 75. 75 and 125. Yes. And 125. Yeah. Good. Okay. Bringing me a total of $200. Okay. So then, what do I need to subtract out from my cash side? A fee. A fee. So let's take a look at my bank statement. Okay. Uh, my bank statement tells me that I have two charges. I have, you have, okay. So the one that it is there that is as NSF, NSF is, uh, it is on the same uh, line here, is a $150. Okay, so in this case, right, it says that this was the check oh, that was non-sufficient funds, but in this case, I didn't get a, the, the check never bounced back. The, the, they, they looked at it, it was like, okay, that's enough, so the bank just passed it forward. They paid oh, for okay. us. Mm -hmm. So in this case, I only have I got charged I got charged for the NSF right there for writing a faulty check. Mm -hmm. So we have a service charge and NSF uh, for one hundred fifty to subtract. Okay. So therefore, what's my total? Uh, ending adjusted balance. So we have it is one one uh, below one hundred below one thousand two hundred and three. Okay. So we can't stop there because we need to verify that the bank it matches. Mm -hmm. So in this mm -hmm. case, what is my ending balance in my bank account? Check that out. Uh, one, and uh, 1,088. 1,088. Okay. What do I need to add to my uh, bank side? Deposit. Deposits. So let's take a look at my deposits right here. Okay. How many deposits do I have? One, two, three, four, five. We have five deposits. Let's check out my um, my bank statement. How many deposits actually cleared? Four. Four. All right. Four. So which one is it? I think the last one. I think the third is. Yep. Okay, so 483. 483. So again, um, right deposit. The checks, good. So yeah. how many checks did I write? A lot. <laughs> <laughs> oh, the checks, you have a one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay. Okay. One, two, three, four, five, six. Missing two. Mm -hmm. So... Is that of 301 or 300? Uh, which one is the number the, of the check, the first one? 301. So let me see. I don't know. Let me see. Let me see. Up. Can you go up? <laughs> so it was 301, 2, 3, 4, 5. Oh, we must send 6 and 7. 306 and 307. 306 and 307 for how much? For 
314 and 54. So right here, check number um, 306 was for 314. Okay. And then check number 307. 307 was for 54. So in this case, 368 total. So what is my ending balance on the bank side? One eighty eight plus one hundred eighty eight plus three sixty eight. Two hundred one uh, one thousand two hundred and three is good. No discrepancy. Per no discrepancy. Good. So therefore, what is the adjusted balance in the bank in the checking account? The C. It's letter C. Okay. All right, so here we go. Here's some, uh, here's an example of what I could ask you about this. So um, this question number 44 here says that you uh, you bought a bank bond with 200 for 20,000, oh my gosh, with $200,000, okay, $200,000, okay? Its annual simple interest rate is 7.75%, so the, and um, can be redeemable at any time, okay? How much will this bank bond be worth in 10 years? Mm. So it is interest it is equal is a simple one there please yep simple, let me i said right here simple interest mm -hmm. it is uh let me see two hundred thousand time zero point zero point zero seven five seven 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 five mm -hmm. time uh, how many ten years mm -hmm. ten years we have to calculate. <laughs> see. Yep. Time 0 0.075 times 10. It is 155, 155, 100. Like that? That's for the, is number eight, the question. Yes. Mm -hmm. So a, a, a 155,000? Mm-hmm. All right. So then, what is the inch? What is the total future value? Um, plus interest plus three hundred thousand Okay. So the question here is asking. Oh, I see. It's asking for the. Mm -hmm. Yeah. What is it asking for? Future value. Mm -hmm. It's asking for future value. What, how much is the bond going to be worth in 10 years? In this case, it's going to be worth... Good, okay? Make sure you know what you're reading, okay? So then... Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So here's um, an example here that you're, I'm not going to test you on um, compound, but go ahead and see if you're able to do this. Um, so if a credit card company... Um, lets you borrow five, uh, five hundred dollars at um, an interest rate of twenty eight point nine percent. All right, and the um, it's compounded every month. How much interest will be collected at the end of two years? Okay, I'll see the formula. It is uh, okay. It is. Uh... So you do have to have Excel for this, but in this case, I'll skip this one because I'm not going to test you on it. Okay. I look at the. I look at that later. Okay. All right. Now we are finally on the very last chapter here. So if you could spare me a couple more minutes, we can finish the rest of the chapter right now. Okay. So chapter 11, all right, is all about depreciation. So the question here is, what fixed assets can never be depreciated? B. B land, good. 
All right. Um, if fixed assets are to are depreciated, then um, intangible assets are amortized. Good. Right. Question number 48 says, okay, if a machine was purchased on, uh, was purchased, sorry, if a machine was put into service as of January 19, when do you start depreciating this? C, February 1st, correct, right? Because it falls after the first 15 days. So therefore you are uh, better to just uh, depreciate it starting in February of the next month, okay? So this case 49 says gap determines what two components for depreciation. Mm -hmm. A and B, I don't do the same mistake. That was the question. Another way you ask. <laughs> Good, right? It does uh, forget this one. It's B and D, uh, B and C only. They only do es uh, estimated useful life and the salvage value. Yeah, and I saw right. the cost, the history cost. I didn't continue to read, so I say okay. uh, later I saw that. Okay, so in this case, there is no historical cost. It's just partial years. Mm -hmm. yeah. So this one, this one's a little slightly different. All right, question number 50 says, okay, what um, are the depreciation methods? D. D, all of the above, right? We learned double declining, units of production, and straight line. Good. Okay. All right, under the, double de under the double declining method, okay, mm -hmm. at the end, of, at the end, book value must be equal to? C. Salvage value, good. So we have a couple. Oh, we have a couple more questions here. So let's go ahead and complete them. So, for uh, use the following table to answer the next two questions. So in this case, right, I give you a table. This is exactly just going to be exactly like the exam. I'm going to give you information that's already filled out. All you have to do is just answer the question and make sure you answer the right question, okay? So in this case, um, I, have a, I have a computer that's worth a total of uh, uh, $2,500. Straight line, its salvage value is $0, and it, the date that you place into service is January 5th, and um, its useful life is five years. So in this case, how do I solve for the depreciation basis for... So Straight line. Uh, Two hundred and eight two thousand. Oh, the cost assets is. We don't have a sub. It's two thousand and five hundred. Good, because there's no salvage value. Mm -hmm. So therefore, it's going to equal the same as your asset cost. Okay. And see the rate. It is one divided by. It is five years, no. Uh huh. Is one point eight uh, zero point two. Good. Now in this case, when did I place into service? When did I place this computer into service? So we have the on January. So in it's January, the, uh, all year you have to calculate. Good. Correct. Five. So in, so, so the in, beginning of the month. Okay, good. So in this case, what's my depreciation expense for the year? Five hundred. Five hundred dollars. Again, we assume that since it's the first year, it's going to be five hundred. So what's my book value going to be? So it is uh, two thousand. Two thousand, right? You're going to take the the asset cost of two thousand five hundred minus the accumulation depreciation of five hundred to give you a total of two thousand, right? Mm -hmm. So now the the depreciation base is the same. Good. And uh, and the rate too. Good. So we have uh, the same uh, uh, depreciation expense. Good. And we add 500, so mm -hmm. we have 1,000. Good. So what's my book value now? 1,500. $1,500. Okay, so now let's answer the question. What is 
the depreciation expense for year one and two. Let's see. Good. Uh, first. Good. Now, what about this, okay? What is the book value for year two? B, 1500 Okay, so I can ask you questions exactly like this. What is, Just like that? Mm -hmm. that what is the book value for year two? What is the uh, depreciation expense for year one? You know, that's what I'll be looking for, okay? Mm -hmm. All right. Mm -hmm. the, uh, the month uh, uh, is for every method or just for the straight method? I don't remember that. Uh, um, for It depends on what the, the scenario is. If it tells you the month, uh, mm -hmm. are you talking about partial years? Partial years only affect straight line and double declining. And double declining, okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. If not, if it's if it's a specific amount or something like that, so then you have to calculate. If not, you do you just uh, do the straight and the double uh, decline. Mm -hmm. All right. So yeah. I can get them. those are the only two that is uh, that partial years truly affects. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. So let's take a look here. Use the following table to answer the next two questions. Mm -hmm. So this is now we bought a printer for a total cost of. $500, okay, its salvage value is zero. We put, um, mm -hmm. the, we placed this into service as of January 2nd. Um, and then of course, um, it can uh, print up to a total of 10,000 pages. Um, it's, uh, the method that we're gonna use is units of production, okay? Mm -hmm. So we don't have a salvage value, so we have the same uh, amount uh Good, so it's just 500, right? 500 minus salvage value is 500. Good. So, okay, so what's going to be my per unit rate? It is the, let me see the formula. It is depreciation basic. Uh -huh. It is 500 divided by the number of units, number of unit product. So divide by 1,000. No, ten thousand. Good. 10, okay. Mm -hmm. So it's zero point zero zero five. Okay. All right. So then, what's going to be my depreciation expense for year one? Number of unit expenses. So it is uh, uh, 500 times two z uh, zero point zero five. No, it is 2,500 uh, times uh, 0 0.05. Correct, correct. It is just one zero after the zero. I think that uh, 10,000, yeah, yeah. 0 0.05. 0 0.05. Zero. zero five. Okay. Hundred times zero point zero five. One hundred twenty five. Okay. Is the same. Now we now we have a two hundred fifty two hundred two thousand five hundred minus one hundred twenty five, no? Not two fifty. No. What's uh, my asset cost? 2,500. 2, no? My oh, asset no. cost. Asset cost. What is the asset cost? Oh, 500. Sorry. 500 minus uh, 125. Mm -hmm. Minus 125. It's 375. 375. Okay. Mm -hmm. Almost done. Okay. So here you go. What's my depreciation basis for year two? It is the, it's the same amount. Yes, it's the same amount. Good. And the rate is the same amount. Right? Good. Now we have 2,000 times 0 0.05. Mm -hmm. 2,000 times 0 0.05. It is 100. Good. So then? 225. Which brings my salvage value to? 500 minus 225 is 275. Good. All right, so now let's answer the question. So... What is the depreciation expense for year one? 135. 
125, good. All right, what is the book value for year two? 275. 275, good, all right. Last two questions from this study guide, okay? We're gonna be using this table to answer the next two questions. Okay, and this is double declining this time, and we bought a computer, okay? Uh -huh. Same thing here, we placed into service as of January 5th. It has five years um, expected life, and it's 2,500 costs with no salvage value. So the deposition receipt is the, the valuable, the value. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So in this case, it's my first year. So what is my total book value now? What is its fair market value? 2,500? Yes, it's going to be the same thing as your asset cost. Good. All right? The rate, it is, uh, let me see, one divided by all five years times two. Correct. It is one divided by record. And two. It is 0 0.1? Is it, no, not 0 no, 0.1. 0 0.2. Times 2. Times 2 is 0 0.4. Good. So I don't know how did they get to... No worries. People, but I don't know. Okay. Uh, I divide that. So the precision basis time rate. So we have two thousand five hundred uh -huh. times zero point four. It is one thousand. Okay. In January February, so we have a one thousand two. Determination of the precision plus claims. And we have a. As a cost, uh, so two thousand five hundred minus one thousand is one fifteen hundred. Good. Okay. So this is the value from the second years for the for the depreciation basis. Good. Perfect. Okay. Mm -hmm. So it is fifteen hundred times zero point four six hundred. It is uh, sixteen hundred. Uh, 2,500 minus 1,600, yeah? Mm-hmm. Minus 1,600 is 900. Okay. Mm -hmm. So, here you go. What is a depreciation expense for year one? 1,000 each. Mm-hmm. All right, that's supposed to be D, but that's okay. And then last but not least, what is the book value for year two? Nine hundred another H. Okay, so yes. Mm -hmm. Hey, good okay. job. Okay. So, yes. Yeah, so this is everything. <laughs> no worries. See, see, since um again, uh, this entire study guide could be done in a day. Right? That we answered. How many questions did we answer? We answered a total of fifty-seven questions. So again, use this. Mm -hmm, Use this as an example for you to be able to use on the exam, right? I'm going to post the answers to this on the Google Classroom, okay? No journal this week because you have an exam. I want you to focus on the exam. Again, it's going to start uh, tomorrow at 8 a.m., so you feel free to take it whenever you'd like, and it will close out on Sunday at midnight, okay? I'm going to give an extension um, to this exam um, for, um, uh, for personal reasons, okay? So uh, make mm -hmm. sure that you are aware uh, that it's three attempts and it's 50 multiple choice questions and it's going to look similar to this exact exam right here. You're going, again, I posted the scratch paper worksheet so you're expected to know at least one periodic question and two perpetual questions for inventory. There's a lower cost of market. There's depreciation, all three of them. Um, a uh, bank reconciliation and a simple interest problem. Okay, so that's those are the calculation portions there. Everything else is going to be based on journalizing. Okay, 
Now, again, this exam is four chapters, two through 11. So just exactly what the study guide did, right? It just This is just more practice problems so you understand and you know exactly what to look for for the exam. I'm not going to go super extensive into and doing purchase returns and allowances or anything like that. So this is as simple as it can be, right? Mm -hmm. So um, again, if you don't have any other extra questions, um, again, you're 